This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that. What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello and a big warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Weekend Podcast. Yes, it's Newbury Lockinge Weekend. Uh, as a special treat for you, we have brought Andy Richmond back on the show because he's the only man in profit in the Naps table this year. So what a way to welcome him back from his sabbatical in the South Pacific. Andy Richmond, Nick Davis, John Lang, welcome. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm only in profit because I haven't been here, that's why. <laughs> Although perhaps I should have stayed in New Zealand because uh, trumpets time, I had like, quite a good time at the twice I went racing over there. Perhaps it's better when you don't know anything about the horses. It is. I find that when I'm <laughs> racing away, just to pick yeah. names. And to be honest, if I'd have done that today on today's racing, it, I'd have done better, I think. Awful performance from me today on my own punting front. So forgive me if, if I'm a little subdued. I'll keep supping the gin so we can mm. have some fun. So, of course, it's the Lockings weekend, and we've got new markets as a sporting card for Newbury tomorrow, and that's what we'll be doing. We'll be looking at the television races after us, of course, as always. So, the one, two, and three point round coming up, folks. So, hopefully, we can continue. We don't do too badly at York. We had a couple of winners highlighted, and, you know, quite a few highlighted in the TV races. So, hopefully, we can keep uh, that momentum going this weekend. Andy Richmond, what's your one point, please? I'm going to go possibly to one of the hardest three-year-old handicaps of the day but um i saw our favorite frenchman on the screen today mr manusier yeah and um, uh, he looked in fine fettle He'd be carrying a bit of condition mind you i must be myself at the moment and his goodwood odyssey took my eye i think i've just about managed to catch up with all the three weeks racing i've missed there thank christ it wasn't a few weeks further on going away because i've still been there trying to catch up on everything but I was quite impressed with the win of Goodwood Odyssey at not only on debut last year, on the only run of last year, but also on the comeback run, or oh, sorry, the second run of the year at Sandown, when he won quite easily, I thought, um, off a mark of 83 over 10 furlongs. Looked well in command. I know there's a few in this that could be hiding said lights under bushel. Uh, horses like King's Gambit, who looks probably lobbed in off 93. Uh, and Mr. O'Brien's horse, they won this race last year with Sean T. So that could, there's two dangers there. But I was impressed with Goodwood Odyssey last time out. So I'll have a point on Goodwood Odyssey for friend of the show, Mr. Manusier. Good stuff. Yeah, nice horse. I agree with you. Mm. Certainly one of the top contenders for that race. And 6-1 to one generally available. You can get 13-2 to two in a place with Denise. So rule books, mate. 6-1 to one for you, Andy, to kick us off. <laughs> for your one-pointer. We're doing his best. Right, Nick Davis, on to you, sir. We're going to the 1700 at Newmarket. Now, this isn't blatantly obvious, but it's run this season. But I have a feeling that now it's back at HQ with Mr. Callan on. He usually runs a very good race. It's called Above, sorry. He usually runs very good races here. It's uh, one here in August of last year. It's been second here to Mum's Tipple, Black Rod and Accidental Agent. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a... Bit of sort of standing order here, and I don't think there's an awful lot of pace in this race. And I think it's uh, yeah, was, was it seven now? And it's probably taking a little while to come to itself. But Mr. Callum back on, and there's not a lot of pace. Uh, I think that for a bigger price, it could give you a very good run for your money. Uh, one point win, Betfair SP. Betfair um, SP, he says. Interesting yeah. tactics from Nick there. Looking quite well in the uh, handicap. 89, it started the winter campaign on the all-weather. And, of course, now has dropped to a very tempting 78. And as Nick says, that makes the case by saying it goes well at this course also with some good efforts. Good choice, Nick. 12 to 1 for you it is, for above. Okay, I'll try and carry on the big price theme. And this is more of a guess-up, I'll be honest. I have to be honest before I say it, rather than just point you in the direction of a studious kind of bet. However, make me king in the 240, the trustedtrader.com, the big race at Newmarket, the 100k handicap. I think this is interesting because 
This is this trainer's first runner in the UK today. And the angle is carrots, carrot form. <laughs> and I think it's one of them. We could all wait a couple of runs and then see that he bangs in a couple of winners. But the fact that Wathnan are using him, and this horse ran in a group three and a group two in Maidan, and prior to that for Andre Farb also was very competitive, and that sort of listed in group three level, suggests this. Off a mark of 104, back Harry Burns taking off the three as well, sneakily. They might want to make an entrance uh, with carrot form. So for that reason, that's the angle. Nothing more, nothing less. It's carrot form, 20 to 1, bet 365, and Hills make me a king. One point win. Thank you, folks. John? It's about this time of day. I'm usually fancying a black treacle ice cream. But... <laughs> what do they taste like, John? Black treacle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did actually ask that question in real life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a bash at the London Gold Cup, um, and he's already... I've had a one bash at it. Well, yeah, and three bashes are better than one, in my mm, opinion. <laughs> I'm, so I'm doing a each way wankering, well, a, a split stake wankering job with two selections, half a point on each. Um, Persica... And individualism. The Persica angle is the, the trainer's note, really, from the stable tour. That we kind of decided that usually aren't worth a dry wank, but here we go. <laughs> a good-looking horse and looked amazing all winter. He'll thrive when he gets a mile and a quarter. And I was pleased with his seasonal reappearance at Kempton the other day. He's matured a lot and will hopefully be a very nice horse. So that's all right. And then... The kilt, I've done my two favourite trainers there. He's a half brother subjectivist. Probably spent way too long running over a mile. He's been gagging for this sort of distance, possibly further anywhere, and could improve a whole lot for a step up in trip. Maybe even put himself in the frame for the King George handicap. Half a point on each. Betfair SP. Yes, certainly, sir. Betfair SP is the way to go so far on the show. <laughs> Persica and individualism for the mm. kilt. So that's already sort of three bashes now at the. There's your try, cast. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, then I'll start round two. We'll make it four bashes. Oh, the... no. <laughs> it has to be, for me, folks, King's Gambit, a uh, nine to two generally available. I think this horse will probably be gambled on. The form, it's like looking like Ron Jeremy's phallus in the fact that this is a horse that beat City Burglar and Boiling Point on his uh, second start. Did it nicely. That strong form. Boiling Point, as we know, is rated 107. City Burglar is currently rated 92. So there's a solid look to that sort of form. And he backed that up with a second to Bracken's Laugh. Of course, again, very, very strong form. Blue Lemons was third. That Colts rated 99. So 93 is certainly workable, as Andy did mention when he first started previewing his bet that King's Gambit could be thrown in. That's mm. how I feel. And I think the 9-2 to two is very much worth taking. So that's our fourth bash. You're going to have three. Let's have four bashes. Two points win. King's Gambit, 9-2. John, I'll swing it back around to you. This is a fairly boring one, really. Fair 30 at first. Start Shield. Caught the eye last time, seriously front end further in Weatherby. Came from miles back. On what ought to be a very favourable mark these days, as a track where it's slightly better for all the horses over this, this distance than at Weatherby, I think you should get a nice, railsy type sit in about six or seven there. And if you're prepared to wait until they're running, I think that's when you really could pounce. But nonetheless, I, th I think he's well worth a two-point win bet here. You can certainly have that at eight to one as well with pounds. And that will do nicely, sir. Yeah, eight to one, nice price indeed. Andy Richmond. Well, we have to have a bit of summer jumping somewhere on the show. Absolutely, why not? So we're going to Bangor, which the last race there is at a crazy six fifty because of this ridiculous idea of this fucking premiumisation crap. Yep. What a pile of, that has got to be the biggest pile of wank this year. And in a, in, in must have been a pretty in a, in a pretty large field of BHA wank. That has got to be the worst. James yeah. Knight would not agree with that. <laughs> when you see me and James Knight agree, then you're probably you're probably on a long way of you know, it's a long time before we agree at all. 
<laughs> but then he does support Man United, so it's probably not a good starting point either. Yeah, but no, you know. no. he goes from bad to worse, that bad, doesn't he? He yeah. does go from bad to worse, yeah. Yeah, six fifty. Churchman. Been following this horse for ages. I thought it's second of eight back in February at Ludlow. So over a trip that was probably a little bit too short. Just looks a horse who needs a bit of a test. They've run it twice since. They have stepped, it did step up in trip at Stratford next time out, but unfortunately it's a bit of a sharp old track round uh, round uh, Stratford, and that probably didn't suit it. Um, up to, back to two miles last time out, you Toxeter. Just needed a stronger gallop. Again, ran another solid race. This doesn't look a great race, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not saying I followed the horse over a cliff, but if he gets a decent gallop here up to two and a half miles, well, up to near two and a half miles, I think he should go very, very close. So a couple of points win on Churchman. Churchman, let us all pray that this doesn't yeah, happen, isn't it? Yeah, we might. Bet. Yes, three to one with an ease, but sadly it's nine or four. General, do you want bet for SP or? I'll take bet for SP. Yeah, I can't see any prices because unfortunately I've used up my free goes on odds checker. Today. Yeah, yeah, I would say this morning, but suddenly it's just reset itself. <laughs> and so. I refuse. I refuse to pay them. Them for an absolutely tawdry service as well. I've seen got, as their yeah. NFL their NFL coverage over the years has been absolutely shit. Well, I've got to say, 10 quid a month in a time now where everyone's struggling. What are we, 7 quid a month for everything we give them compared to their tenor to just search for prices? Considering that they get all bookmakers, affiliates, all this lot. There's not much point in using it, Lee, because I can only bet with about two of them anyhow, so... Well, this is it. That is a sign of the times, Andy, that they've had to do this because, of course, people are losing their accounts and if they're getting less affiliate deals... Than what they used to do, then yeah, that, that, that this, is, this is a sign of the times. Odds checker, obviously, feeling it, but yeah, it's not for me either. I, I would never yeah. pay, so yeah, you're right on that. <laughs> so, so, Churchman, bet fair SP for Andy yeah. again. The theme of the show, Nick Davis, finished the round. We're going to the one of the best races of the day, the mile handicap at Newbury. I've got a couple of strong opinions here. I don't uh, think that uh, Biggles or Sonny Liston, I can't have them at the moment. Biggles trying uh, a mile for a while. Sonny Liston usually needs a run in there. Pacing the race comes from Teleso over there, Autumn Festival Temper, so it should be a decent pace. I did think Godbertson would reverse form with Metal Merchant, but I also love Slip of the Pen's run at uh, Newmarket last time, where if you look and travelled into, travel into the race like a good thing, and uh, if it was just fitness there, then it's going to go close. So I think Gobberson reverses a metal merchant and a slip of the pen's there. So it's a point reverse forecast, Gobberson, a slip of the pen. Interesting. Obviously, I'll, I'll talk with, with you about this race now because it's not a race we are covering in the uh, previews. God, God Winson, I do think he's a very, very good horse. But I do think he likes to get his toes in a little bit. And it just mm. might concern me a bit if the ground gets a bit quick because I thought York was wrong for him. The entry at York this week in Hamilton mm. was wrong. It was the wrong track for a horse that likes to come from off the pace and Newbury will suit him far much better. I probably agree with you that he could probably reverse form a metal merchant. If he's not ground dependent, you're all right, Nick. So slip of the pen mm. for Nick and Godwinson point reverse forecast to finish round two. Thank you very much, sir. On to the best bets round now. And normally I won't go first because... I've just gone first, but I'm going first because I bet your mind's the most boring. <laughs> no one's going to beat this for boredom. 150 race, Newbury, Desert Hero. It's the most boring selection. 11 away. That's doable. I was in chat with John earlier today about this race, and I said, well, Desert Hero, I'd probably make about 10 to 11. Nothing's good enough to beat it. It's whether it just turns up on the day for me. And I think 11 is quite fair. And for that reason, the comeback was perfectly good over 10 furlongs when it was touched off by a very good horse in Okeechobee. And I think I think Desert Hero this year will prove probably just shy of Group 1 class. He's better than Group 3. I think he's Group 2 for sure. And I think 11 to 8 is a blogger sort of price more than fair, if we say. So I'll kick the maximum bets off. With the obvious one in the Aston Park, the 150 tomorrow, Desert Hero. Nick. Right, we're going to the 240 at Newmarket. John tipped this one last time out. I was surprised because of the ground. Rainbow Fire. 
it's had three runs this season. None of, none of them would have suited a mile and a quarter, a mile and a uh, half furlong. He doesn't really get. He doesn't really get a mile. And seven furlongs last time out. He won that race last year at Haydock, but then it's turned up really, really soft. And he's labouring on the outside. He's run a tremendous race for what it was. The last time he said seven furlong, furlongs on good ground. The last three times he's won. Backs his winning mark of 95. And think Divine Libra. Whilst he won at uh, Chester last time, they were, at, they were at the front. He he did well from his outside draw, but uh, they were both out from the front and they got there. Uh, uh, Quinault and Desert Cop, seven furlongs. Can you think Koi Koi might have a chance? Summer Grand's got up to seven furlongs. I think there's an awful lot of boxes ticked with Rainbow Fire. And uh, he's my three point win of the three-point nap of the weekend. Superb. Yeah, I like your reasoning. He did run a Corker last time and 10 to 1. That's with Coral, Spoil Sports and Labrooks. So good luck if you've got them accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it's on offer. The supposedly big bookmakers, mm-hmm. what can we do? We can only just say what's there. But yes, Nick, with a nice 10 to 1, three-point nap. Andy Richmond. We're going back, summer jumping. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you talked it up, 7.03. Yeah, I do think the Skeltons, they do like mopping up races like this, don't they? And this take no chances. I know she's a fairly short price, but it doesn't look to be anything ahead of the handicap. She's had one blowout this year, which came when she made a bad mistake at Newbury. Apart from that, she's been steadily progressive, I think is the word, through novice hurdles, through handicaps or into handicaps last time out. She had a good second at Newbury on the 22nd of March and then one last time out of Warwick. I thought she had a lot of ton in hand last time out. That form ties in very closely with Zane Knight, who won the, uh, who won a good race at Haydock last weekend. It got up narrowly, but he's been doing really well. So the form all ties in and it just doesn't look to be anything ahead of the handicap here. There's a few that have had sort of chances in front. Popeye's got the second favourite, City Chief. I don't fancy that back over hurdles. So I'll take three points on take no chances in that 7.03 at Utopsida, which is quite a valuable prize for the time of year. Yeah, it did win very well last time. 15 to 8 generally available for Andy. Are you happy with that or Betfair SP? I'm going to take Betfair SP again because I think there might be a bit of money for some of the others. So I'll, I'll take the I'll B, BFSP. Good stuff. That Again, the theme of the show. So, John. Finishes off for the Max Betts round. We've got a couple of bankers and a nice tens perk. What are you coming up with? I'm going to waste anybody's time with it. So I thought he's having over E. Godwinson. Ah. Ob- obvious, but still value, in my opinion. Should have won the Spring Cup, not rushed back into action. Has potential at a mile. Might even end up better off at 10 up to something, maybe in the Magnet Cup, for instance. But I think he'll win this on route. Three points win. 11 of 4, John or Betfair SP. A bit of a shirt day tomorrow, isn't it, at, at Newbury? It's got a few good chances. It, it is, and I sort of tried to set the theme a bit this week at York, Yorkshire, trying mm. to tip a few shirt horses. This is his time of year as he, as he starts to plan his targets. And, but I like the fact he didn't run this at York because I thought that was a smart yeah. move. That's mm. the smart bit. He thought, do you know what, Ambleton, nah. Held up, and he wouldn't have beat Point Linus. He'd have never got to it. I think this is a great move for the shirt, and hopefully he'll not find find conditions too lively for John's Max Bet and Nick's forecast, of course, with slip of the pen. So at least we're being consistent here on that one. It's sort of a claxon in a way. So hopefully we can do the business. Hope you enjoyed that round. Uh, three sort of banker bets and a, and a ten to one perk from Nick on the three point selections. We go on to the television action where it's Newbury and Newmarket only tomorrow. And we shall start with HQ. Conditions seem to be favouring the front end still. It's quite favourable. So that's possibly something to bear in mind for your punting. And if you're trading plane, you know, work out what's possibly going to get some nice trips there. And we start off with the 205 there. A wide open contest. No one knows what to bet. I just thought I'd start us off with just an insight regarding Serene Seraph of Richard Hannon's The Philly, written by Alec Volkansky. Now, what I find interesting about this, people will be looking at this and thinking, hang on a minute, third to Carla's Way, which ran at the Breeders' Cup. Then this is made. Supposedly Guinea's candidate. Second to Skellet, which again was a Guinea's candidate, but she wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Then won her maiden very easily 
at Newmarket and then bombed out when three to one jolly for a listed contest. Now, that looks good then, appearing in a handicap off 89. But again, I thought that the negatives are there's been no big entries for this filly. And that's weird because it's Wathnam racing, so they're not bothered. So the fact that they've not bothered, and this is a trainer, by the way, that was quoted on the 22nd of September. He said that she would be an ideal type for the Fred Darling in the spring and, and the Radley Stakes back here next month. This was last autumn. So he's talking pattern class, and yet we find her here off 89 with no entries. John, would you say that's a negative? Yeah, I would. Mm. A slight correction, Lee. One at Newbury. <laughs> do, you, do you think it might have been the track that didn't suit? He's, he's a, he's a, a Newbury and Doncaster are the best two runs on flat tracks. Yes, that's another thing. Yeah, the flat tracks of Doncaster, Salisbury, Newbury, like you said, sorry for saying Newmarket, because that she bombed out at this track, so that'd be a worry again. So why would they come here? Because they're idiots. <laughs> the yoghurt can. The Serene Seraph, although she's shaped like a really nice filly. John, you liked her physically last year, didn't you? Yeah, I thought she was a nice girl. And as I say, where's the entries? I bet it's other one. I think it's his best number has been put up uh, uh, here, isn't it? Yeah, last time out, second to key to Kotai. Kodiak thriller in third. That was quite strong form, to be honest. Good for the level. Nothing not to like. I would probably prefer to back that than the filly, which I don't know what she's doing here, to be honest. I'm struggling with this place. Yeah. But... The market's not telling you anything, is it? It's nine to two the field in a, what, a seven, mm. run of, seven run of affair. I think it tells you that everything that's in here is probably assessed about right, perhaps. Mm. John, anything further to add? I've been trying to give Gretchen some another chance after kind of bombing out when the, the battle chain went in. Rattling good farm back at the beginning of April. I think they're in much better settle now. I thought the rank of May run was very good. The, the winner came out and won afterwards, as did the third. I think 83 underestimates that one. Could do, because it shaped well at Sutherland. It might be a better race than what it yeah. first looks. So you won't be surprised if that come out of one. Yeah. Definitely. After Gelding. Andy, anything to add to this? I agree with John. I thought the, the that second at Red Car was very good. Both Voltaire and Speeding Bullet won next time out. I think it's probably... The, the two I liked against the field in a race I don't have a strong opinion on were Gressington and Love Billy Boy. Love yeah. Billy Boy was opened up about sixes and I couldn't work that out because I thought it should be favourite. Well, there you go. We're kind of in a pretty much agreement. So that's the case being made. Hope you find that useful, folks. I thought it was quite good reasoning. 240 is the Trust of Trader handicap. Divine Libra, obviously, winning from a disadvantageous position last time. Nick, obviously, very confident with his three points. Running a blinder at Haydock last time behind Earls and really likes it. And I get that. Obviously, I've tipped Make Me a King, the potential carrot horse. We don't know. We could be absolutely a bag of spanners but going for the price John any thoughts here? I've been inclined to give Cherry the one another chance last time Ascot was just a fucking balls up from start to finish to be honest Stott switched right over to the stand rails at the start got himself plenty of distance plenty of energy then switched to the middle the horse did run on a bit but there was so much messing about early on he was never in it he's better than that Chances are this will just be another prep for the Hunt Cup tilt, but 33 one's too big. You'd have a little bit on that, just for Washington. sickness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And they... Again, not on race, I had a massive opinion on that. I thought the, the, the horse I followed again, there's another cliff horse, this darkness. So looking back at his sixth of 16 at Newmarket last time out, wasn't the worst run. It's back down in trip here. Saw a horse who's going to pick up a handicap or a decent handicap somewhere along the line this year as he did last year. He's always sort of there or thereabouts. Don't know if he's a bit of a nearly horse. There's a bit of a money around for him. So darkness in a, you know, in a heat, I don't really have a strong opinion in. He's well in. He's capable off that mark. Yeah. Um, for sure. He's one of those that he, if it all falls right for him, he's going to, he goes very close, but he doesn't need it. You know, doesn't need yeah. it to fall right for him. Obviously, we've avoided the subject of the favourite Divine Libra. Nick, you in particular have liked Divine Libra. 
Yeah, I liked it the first, the, the first run. The reason I, I didn't want to back it last time out, uh, you know, when it was around about four to one from an outside thing, it was it was well found. Obviously, they knew what they had there, and it you know won very well. This is I think this is this is a step up in class from what it what it won at uh, Chester though. At Chester, yeah, this is yeah, a far yeah. better field, especially Stotty on John will be against Divine Lieb. The detestable Stott. <laughs> I'd also say be Divine Lee, but all his three wins have come on turning tracks. Mm. Ah. That's Rick and Chester. He was unlucky at, at the July course a couple of times there. Mm. He had a bad he had a bad he's draw. Had a, he's had a third and a second there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's had some bad yeah. draws. But this is this is this is what about a stone better race than uh, Chester? Well, the Chester one. You have to switch that off on July cars to get a decent racing line. He probably thought it was a fucking round car. You could drop a bomb on it, you You could drop a bomb on the July course and it would, would help. Yeah, tap it to see mm. John for yeah. the July course. So, yeah, yeah. All day. A new market. Benefit. Keep, keep the tap it on the inside and keep the outside course for when it rains and there's a nice draw by yeah. us there. Don't you chaps agree that, like, like if they put tap it in, you put floodlights on? mile pole so in winter you could have mile races and shorter like commercially that's got to be worth plenty for him, hasn't it to be able to run new market throughout the winter can you imagine how cold it would be can you yeah, imagine, yeah, imagine yeah, you all need... that, that wind off there oh where's I mean, me the yeah. fucking weather be and sedge trail Nick I know, I know, I know you <laughs> like the like, fucking bath, I know you lot go sunbathing in bloody December and sort of you know like washing in the North Still... Sea and things like that but I thought yeah, I, still I, got an outside, he's still got an outside bog. I was at Whitley Bay the other Sunday. It's quite funny because obviously going down south a fair bit and then going north of it to see the difference. At like 13, 14 degrees, all the northerners are in like t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> and you go down south <laughs> and it's like 15 maybe or 16 and they're in coats. <laughs> I used to have dogs at Great Yarmouth. I, I was sure it was twinned with Stalingrad in the winter. When that north yeah. when wind comes up, the north <laughs> state. Oh, bloody hell. Look at Nick. Nick's living like in, in central south, though, where it's. In the like... next, next winter, like, you get the weather forecast. So good morning, Britain. There's, there's Laura Tobin there with nipples protruding and saying, Oh, God, uh, yellow weather warning, red weather warning. You know, don't go out. Don't go out. It's terrible. And you watch Look North on night and it just says, Put your big coat on. <laughs> It's true, it's the outside toilets, Nick, here. Yeah. It's There's no toilets in some cases. <laughs> it's really yeah. usual for you where they're just shitting in straight. Oh, it right. is. Probably in part three, he's London now as well, anyway. <laughs> they, don't, don't, they don't knock his team. I need him to do a favour on Sunday, them <laughs> There's no chance. Got my shirt, I've got my shirt on already. No, we've, we've, said, so the... we, we've said if, if you pay us 85 million for Pakwasar, then you know you have the three points. Well, I'm as playing. City somewhere. away. City. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Enjoy your game. That could be like a QPR kind of game, though. Mm. You know about QPR, one we say? Jesus, yeah. that would TV and off. Anyway, back to three fifteen. It's the Jennings, Britain's leading independent bookmakers. Said no one ever handicap not to eighty eight. The blogger was in there. The blogger was in one in Spain. Where he no, that, that was L Jennings. L Jennings. L Jennings. L Jennings. Javier Jennings. That was. One yeah, Jennings. Javi- Javier Jennings. Yeah. We want yeah, we, we like want we want to see if we if we can do the same, go in with five G's on one and see what happens. Mm. You know you know what annoys me most about the blogger is his handwriting. It's appalling. Oh, yeah. It is, it's I can't appalling. believe that, but it is, I know. A child of three could write better. Yeah, it's bad. In fact, <laughs> palpable error. I mean, if I were a book, yeah. I'd be looking at it thinking I can't yeah. read that void. <laughs> void <yeah. laughs> when he's back to winner, Money can't back read it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. sir. That's it. Void, void race. <laughs> right. 315 then. I thought this was gettable to try and find a winner, but I couldn't find one because I did look for a podcast bet for us. I thought Hopeful was very take honorable. I didn't like the Philly at all, I'll be honest. Sign Castle City won a mm, ordinary race at Bath with the run of the race. Zosimus never wins, sort of like no, always there, never, there about. Yeah. No, never wins. And I was looking for something off the front. Dashing Roger Ground's probably too quick for him. Cabinet of Clowns goes forward. Seasonable reappearance. High mark. He's a gentleman goes forward for Carlton Palmer. Again, high enough mark. I found it incredibly difficult. Alto came from the back last time around a blinder. But again, do you want them coming from the back? 
Okay, so Nick, how do you see this race? You love your old age, age handicaps. What are you saying about the 350? I, I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, pace comes from he's a gentleman, cabbit of clowns, wool dashing, Roger run. Also, where does that go? I just went oh, yeah. back and forth and couldn't make yeah. sense of this. I really couldn't make sense of this at all. So I just put a red, big red line. Piece of shit. Always fine with these races. With these races, if you spend, if it doesn't come to you within, you know most of these horses anyway. And if it, an angle doesn't come to you within about 20 minutes, you just go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for no. 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 This is weird, right? So you often find races like this where it's very backable, if you like. You can find something, but there's always seems to be nothing <laughs> that, you, that you want to pin your hat to the... John, what is your thoughts on this? I thought this was shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had, we've right, had a no and a shit. Well, yeah. yeah kind of get that. Okay, so that's, that's John. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what John's going to be doing then during that race. Andy, anything to add on that? Well, yeah, John eating at Oxar, he probably is going for a shit. Yeah. Think, and John, you rated the highly, didn't you? Very, very mm. close to a nine out of ten, that. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. Yeah. Might, have to, might have to try that then. Um, if there was well, have you not had Oxar, Andy? Uh, not in the Chinese, no. Uh, what was the tripe like, John? Good. Delicious, yeah. It just absorbs all that flavour, you know. Might have to have a give, might have to give that a go. The, the, honestly, like, like I told you last night, like the best part of it was the set blood. Ah, the, the set. Yeah. It was in tubes. It was like tofu. I'm sort of like praying for golf club at this moment in time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, we move on. For, we're done for Newmarket. It's Newbury time. Delto was the horse I thought might have a chance in that league. Yeah. Andy, Andy, that's the most likeliest winner if it runs in that. But yeah, I'm a bit worried about the tactics that they might employ. If it does, uh, we go is, to Newbury, the 150. It's the Aston Park. I've already said three points on Desert Hero at 11:08. I think that's a great bet, John. Yeah, Desert Hero for me. I'd just have the fucking lot of think. It is. I think it's that good a thing. But we said that about the. Gods and horse in the Musidor, and that bounced like a bouncy thing and was ridden by an idiot. Yeah, but that was Gods, and we resolved after that to oppose all things Gods, haven't we? Yeah, we've said we're not backing Gods. Yeah. We've, we've said fuck you, Gods, basically. We have. <laughs> we have. You take your mark with you. That's what we do, of course, right. What, what do you think of the going? I mean, it'd be probably good. I think if they get no rain, possibly on the slightly quicker side, but. Desert era, of course. Ascot winner, fast ground, lap it up. Mm. Ascot was quick enough, I'd, so I, I wouldn't be worried about anything really tomorrow. We're all over the fucker. Yeah, are. I'm mad. Andy? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be my sort of play really at that sort of price, but I can see your points for it. Um, I suppose Middle Earth would have some sort of chance and Salt Bay, but yeah, it doesn't look... Now, uh, come on, Andy, we're all linking arms and walking down the same fucking street, are you? Yeah, Desert Hero. <laughs> desert, yeah, desert, desert Hero, yeah, yeah. Over the cliff with Desert Hero, yeah. Get you off to a good start for the afternoon. Indeed. Okay, then. 2.25 at Newbury, which is the Carnarvon Stakes. High Clare Castle Gin. Isn't that interesting? Nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Listed contest. Uh, Relief Rally tried the seven furlong experiment in the Fred Darling didn't work. Uh, people said about this filly training on. Will it train on? Has she trained on, John? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for some like immense paddock expertise there and said, well, I, I saw her. She was sort of compact, sort of narrow, didn't like. And you went, oh. <laughs> Is that it's, it? I didn't think she ran as badly as she looked as though she was going to run. You know, because right. I, I, like yourself, I wasn't impressed looks wise, but I thought she ran all right, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's all right, you get these clever fuckers all the time, you know. Oh, it needs to grow on this, <laughs> and you know, over at winter, you know, he's hadn't put a fucking hands on and that, you know. Yep, yep, the fuckers shall have a look at a YouTube of the minstrel winning derby, a little bit bigger than the fucking Labrador. <laughs> 
That's right. Well, Adam Norman, our paddocks and loves a big mare. Uh, we put about for the edge the other day called Miss Gitana. And he, he messaged me. He said, oh, oh, don't like this small, compact. Oh, you know, what are you doing? And she, she was unlucky to lose, really. But he's like, John said to me today, he says, you will not back a fucking cow against a rabbit, would you? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. John, when does size matter? When you're in the pack with a fit bird. <laughs> don't let him tell you otherwise. <laughs> With a small <laughs> lamb. <Yeah. laughs> that, right. That's it. Never go for a last with big hands. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there's, there's, there's the title of today's pod. And I don't usually title Friday shows, but never go with a last with big hands. <laughs> but well, you say the title for Sunday show, and we fucking do. <laughs> Oh, more carnage. Right, of course, we're back on Sunday. Don't forget that. But just going on to this race. So, John, you you liked Malk last year, didn't you? I did, yes. And I mean, he, to be fair to Malk, he hasn't had many chances to put spots on it, has he? So, you know, um, I did have a feeling that they might have cut that one over, over the winter. Hmm. So, I'm assuming that the horse is... Developed considerably physically and might not even be finished developing because I couldn't say he's making a stallion anywhere. So if I felt he'd, he'd grown in all the right areas and he was the right shape, then probably he hasn't said, Right, fuck it, we'll cut him now. The fact that he's still intact, eye, as you can uh, might say, he might still be a work in progress. He's really likely raced for a race like this, really. It'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting one to have a look at and see how he shapes. What do we think to room service? This was Love a it. horse. No, no, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to. You know, that's how you pick the phone up and the lobster roll pops up bad when it's there. The club sandwich with a, you know. Yeah, exactly. With the fries on the side. And a little chicken dinner. What we're saying about room service then, because this was impressive when beating Dragon Leader in the sales race at Doncaster came out. Didn't get the run of the race though in the Greenham, completely trapped for room, never got going. What do you make of the drop back in trip? I don't think it'll be a disadvantage myself. Hmm? Built like well, it's typical Kevin Wright, isn't he? He's got an ass like a number nine bus. <laughs> so. <laughs> You wouldn't think we got in trip of inconvenience at all. He might be just about maxed out at where he's at rating his wise, but still still giving him a live chance, really. So room service, you're not ruling out. Pocklington, I don't think you like a Jeff Alroyd, because you said to me that he'd be running in a listed race next, and that's fucking pointless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was somewhat like that, anyway. So you weren't bothered about that. Selections, chaps. Nick, I know this is not your your scene, really. Oh, one thing I would say that, you know, uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, a day in Devon, as he's proved that A, it's uh, effective as a three-year-old, and B, it's up, even again, up against his elders. There, there won't be a tougher one here, will there? No, I suppose so. Andy, anything to add? James's delight. Go on. Stepping up our handicaps. One with an absolute ton in hand last time out. I think he's got an interesting performer, travels well. Certainly one that you could trade in the race against a few that, I don't know, I'm not sure how much they've got much much more improvement left in them. And I certainly think this thing, this thing, as you're certainly sure it's fit enough. I was quite impressed with it at Ponty. Then it, okay, it blew out and last time out, but I still think it's worth another chance. It won really well last time out. Still, still think that's worth another chance. James is delight, Clive Cox. If you look at it, the, the, the weight, it's really well in. Mm. Louis Barthas running in this. Is Harry Redknapp so fucking dense and hard up for tickets that he needs to run something in this just for the hell of it? Probably against the advice of Ollie Sangster. I would have thought not. Surely this thing's wintered exceptionally well and Sangster's singing about it and the thought, well, Harry's such a lucky, lucky bastard. We might as well start off. <laughs> Put this in the Commonwealth Cup, you know. Well, what do you think? 66 to fucking one. Him and Ferguson must be the luckiest two owners God's ever put breath into. <laughs> you 
they're, they're lucky to the point of just annoying the shit out of you. <laughs> Surely to God that's worth an act, isn't it? 66 as Lewis Barpass entered in the Commonwealth Cup. It's a very afraid tomorrow, lads, if it went in and nobody's had a fucking bane on. And Harry's there talking about bloody Sandra's roly poly and the fucking cuss and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> 50 to 1, now it's reported on the fucking screen. Harry's really poorly custard. It's already been cut into 50s from 66s. We haven't even gone yeah. live. It's like we're bugged. Anyway. Somebody's had a nab there. I wonder yeah. how. Yeah, yeah. Right, we move on to the London Gold Cup. Sean T is uh, currently vying for favourites as I speak about this race uh, with King's mm-hmm. Gambit, as mentioned. We've had four stabs at this. I hope we come on top because we get sticky if we don't. But yeah, we're not bothered anyway. Fuck off. So <laughs> there's an awful lack of uh, decent race entries for most of these. Nothing's really entered. I mean, Shanty's all, of course, has entered up, uh, ended up all over the place. But I wouldn't want to take a, a, a price about some of the O'Brien runners. Uh, they haven't been setting the world alight this over here this year, have they? The, the, the Tower of London today. Fucking hell! I felt like I were in it. <laughs> After that, ah, <laughs> oh, God, not to... well, I think only uh, one other runner's got a uh, sort of fancy entry. I can't even remember which one it was. Yeah, but, uh, it, no. Oh no, it's Fighter Command's got a King Ted. Yeah, uh, well, I'm very fucking Gabby. Someone going on there. <laughs> no, 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 no. King's Gambit's going no other entries at the what moment. What about Hannah? He, he was talking in glowing terms about my selection. He must have written somewhat decent. Oh, Persica. I don't think that's entered for me. Well, he's a lying twat, twat man. <laughs> yeah, he's a lying twat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Shanti, obviously, a full brother to Iowa. Do you, do you, uh, I was going to ask you, we'll have a sort of thing. What do you think? Uh, do you think these three-year-olds are a very, very moderate bunch? Because there seems to be an awful lot of uh, uh, things not tying in, isn't there? Well, I'm disappointed so far with the classic. I've got to say, everything that I've seen so far, I'm waiting for something to blow me away. It's not really happening. Well, you've got the Irish Guineas and probably one of the maiden trials, but, but that, that's virtually it. All the all the Cox Hat stakes at Goodwood, which I think hasn't been won since decent since Troy. No. I think. You're right, Nick. I'm that, I'm that disappointed. I think they're blowing themselves away. Yeah, we can all blow our brains out, which we might discuss on the sermon. But which bastard will blow their brains out first? <laughs> uh, all the fun of the fair. The four stabs. Andy is with Goodwood Odyssey. Mm. John is with Persica and Individualism. I'm with King's Gambit. Nick, gun to the head. Gun to the head, per- gun to the head Persica, but that's right. about it. Okay, siding with John. Well, at um, least you didn't add a this. No. <laughs> right, we finish with the big race of the day. The lock that everyone's looking forward to. <laughs> Said no, whatever. Sponsored by Al Shakab. Probably Boodles will have it next year, like everything else. And they're running pink saddle cloths. 226,000 is the winner for the lock Big Rock had the rail buyers at Ascot when getting its massive rating of 127 from 118. Was it flattered that day, chaps? We, yeah. oui. everything, even that thing of uh, uh, that thing of the kilts won the uh, the mile handicap, and you saw the rail bias and mm. the base bias. Everything was strung out like that that day. That was a uh, that was a silly decision to put Ascot back Champions Day on that late. So the nine to four fav is currently an hundred and eighteen horse that's got a false rating. Then the second in, or the joint favourite, if you like, is a filly that never seems to come to herself till about August. What are we doing here? There's quite a bit of pace here as well, yeah. aren't there? Dear my friend, flight fan. Yeah, there's a few go forward. And here. the third in is Roger Vegetables, that is, is in blistering form, by the way. I do like how he's developed physically. But ground a bit lively now? Yes. Yeah. Would we really want to be back in this on, like, if it does go good mm. to firm? No, no. Uh, poker, if poker face wins, you 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 downgrade it to a group three. Yeah. Royal Scotsman gets the tongue tie for the first time. There's your bet. Royal Scotsman, very by Spencer comes to our late. Long yeah. faces. Off yeah, that could be. Yeah. After a right off three year old season, comes mm. back to the promise it showed it too. Well, second in a guineas. Yeah, tongue tie on. Tongue tie on. Job the good. Could be the one. So we're saying then it's a potentially bad lockage, this, isn't it? 
Oh, yes. Mm. If you're in Spiral Fan, it's one of them. If she's in the form that she shows like a peak, she's going to win. She's going to win this race. It's that simple. But as we've seen in the past... We have to stick to the script, please. And the script now says Claire Haven, Finito. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Yeah. Well, look at in Spiral's career. So, like, she won on a debut in late June. Then next season, she won the coronation, went straight to the coronation, won in June. And then season after, ran in the uh, Queen Anne, was it? Yeah, quit second in the Queen mm-hmm. Anne on reappearance in June. So, we're in May. It's a system bet. <laughs> no bet. You can't bet in Spiral. There you go. So, that, that's it. You're either saying 118 Big Rock. That's what it is, 118, not 127. Fuck 127. That's it. So it's 118 that, or you back Royal Scotsman at a price, like John says, Jamie Spencer sat up in the saddle like pig at two hours. Weaving through. Yeah, weaving through. Yeah, saying, you bastard, you fucking block, got it blocked off, you cunt. So Nick and Andy, I'm coming to you. What's the final analysis on the locking chair? I, I, I throw a, a, a few real darts with the ones that finish, like Royal Scotsman. I, I, I'd probably go for the full guys. Royal Scotsman, real world witch hunter for a laugh. Really massive full yeah, would be a fucking huge. I, I don't like anything at the front end of the... I don't really like anything at the front end of the market. As you say, in Spiral, a bit early, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Got skid mark on board. Yeah. Don't really want to back in with that. Well, that's the other thing. No Luigi. Big Rock. It's a new trainer, isn't it? He's only been with him three weeks. But it's your guy. He's only been. He's only been there. He's only been there. A, 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 a reading a couple of interviews and reading between the lines, I don't really think he knows what he's got there yet. <laughs> so, yeah, so. his last few runners have all got thumped. It's not really like right. not really bouncing. When I first looked at the race, I thought, "Oh, big rock goes in the front here." Then I'm thinking. You, you, you look at it, there's a few other front runners could get taken on. You've got the Ascot form, which got a question mark against. New trainer, read between the lines. It wasn't, it didn't fill me with confidence. In Spiral, as you say, they're charring. Will it go on the ground? You're just looking for something, aren't you? Looking for something else. You are. No, you are. Something could get a book, could be as, as Nick says, you could get a boil over here. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't put anyone off throwing a few silly quid at um, at the ones at prices here, would you? No, nope. that's the bastard's tactics, I think, to um, sort of finish the show. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. We've covered off the television races fantastically well, I think. Some good opinion tonight. I liked it. You know, it's not the easiest weekend to navigate through, but I think there was some solid opinion there. And uh, I thank you, John, Andy and Nick, for all your opinion. Of course, we are back on Sunday to talk absolute nonsense. And I've got a feeling this show will go haywire someday with absolute, even more nonsense. So make sure you tune in. And of course, for racing's big issues that they're going through at the moment. And of course, a lot of fun to go with it. So we're back on Sunday. Hope you enjoyed. Bye for now.